one. So here we go. <laughs> All right, keeping things interesting. So yeah, of course we have another Siebel update to talk about, uh, thanks to the good people at Oracle who, yeah, just delivered these uh, like clockwork for a few years now, 24.7 is out. And there's a few interesting things to say about 24.7. I have, and uh, also on the list of things on the uh, agenda for today is a special guest, Christian Wolf, who will uh, present us, well, a special topic. <laughs> Let's keep it a little bit uh, exciting here. And um, I have planned if there is time after uh, Christian's um, presentation, talk about the path to Redwood since 24.7 uh, includes Redwood, just like 24.6 and how to get there. And along the way, we have a little bit of updates on the Siebel Hub training experience. So let's uh, talk about 24.7. Uh, as you can see on the list here, uh, quite a few things uh, of interest, especially the uh, deletion or the capability to delete delivered developer workspaces. So that's a uh, yeah, nice acronym here. I, I see an acronym coming. Uh, test automation has an official new feature, uh, conditional test steps, which is uh, super cool. Um, if you used any rich text editing capabilities of Siebel, you will notice there's a new library used, TinyMCE. And OCI AI integration gets a little bit of updates with uh, new user properties for attachments, for the uh, speech transcription. And there are several issues fixed in order management. And Tomcat is also updated to 90. 88. So yeah, let's uh, dive in a little bit. And of course, if there's anything to note about these things or to, to, yeah, to correct things that I have, yeah, please chime in. Microphones are open, chat is open. So uh, yeah, I think many, many people will uh, love this one because it's a common problem as Siebel gets, uh, Siebel 20 plus gets mature and projects are running for several years. The developer workspaces keep piling up in, yeah, up to thousands or, or more. And if they pile up under the main workspace until 24.6 or 7, <laughs> you cannot delete them. So they keep piling up until you do a, f a flatten, of course, and flatten is not really uh, a a recommended thing unless you do a language install. So now with 24.7, we can delete delivered developer workspaces. It's the delivered one that really causes headaches. And you can do that through web tools or Siebel tools manually, even if they are below main. And there's also a batch deletion facility uh, included in the uh, very trustworthy SIPDEF CLI utility, which uh, by now has uh, sure has a level of adoption reached, so people are using it. And that has a new switch, or actually two new switches. One is a batch switch to delete all delivered developer workspaces under the workspace given, that is main or integration workspace. So that would be here. And then there's a single delete uh, delete workspace switch. So you just give the developer workspace name after that. And yeah, I, I gave it a spin and it works uh, as advertised. So really. Alex, you can also, you can also supply it with a uh, file that lists all of the workspace you want to oh. delete. Okay. So that's, is that in bookshelf? Because it's probably it, it should be. It should okay. be. I hope okay. it is. <laughs> okay, so you can specify a file probably with yeah. with another switch and. Mm -hmm. Okay, I didn't. Know. Okay, let's. Uh, thanks for that, Kerry. Yeah. Yeah. And that, of course, is a great relief for uh, many teams, I guess. Um, so, what do you think, guys? Any any immediate expression of joy? <laughs> yeah. Okay. 
thanks there. And also, um, yeah, people will rejoice if they are um, if they are using test automation with Siebel and test scripts, then um, there is reason to be uh, happy because there's a new field. Uh, in Alex, if, yeah. If, sorry to interrupt you, but I saw that Richard sent a um, oh, chat yeah. about the previous item. So before we move on, maybe I can okay. Ask yeah, you thanks for comment thanks on for that if you don't oh, because it's related to the last one. I think. Cheers, Brian. Well yeah. spotted. <laughs> Okay, so uh, Richard asks, is there any audit trail of this? So when you delete workspaces? <clears throat> it's kind of a general question, but uh, this one particularly, because it has the potential to do lots of stuff. Yeah. Yes. So there should be, it should be in the log. I haven't actually looked myself to see that it is, but yeah, I can't imagine that which, it wouldn't be. But which log are you talking about here? This would be the... Uh, hmm. You know how you get it delivered? Log. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, I, also I would you... think it should be in the audit trail, honestly. Okay, let me, if let me check on that. If you enable yeah, audit because, trail. Because on... a log, because, I mean, I, I mean, I don't know how to do that in general, but I mean, it, it's it's a fair question. Um, you know, if somebody wipes yeah. out all your works, yeah. you might want to know who did it. And if it's just in a right. log file, that would that would get archived off and eventually get you. Yes. I, I think my... it's a good question, Richard. I, I, I doubt we've covered that, honestly, uh, <laughs> but I think it's a, it's a good idea. Okay. I, okay. I can't remember. I so... doubt we thought of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks, guys. Okay. So log file, <laughs> definitely audit trail, not so sure. Uh, and um, I see that Kerry, Kerry, you have posted, yeah, the chat. Kerry has posted in the chat. So make sure to grab it, the additional command to use a file which is uh, delete workspaces, is that is that right? So instead yeah. of, del yeah, just yeah. plural and then a file name. Okay, that's how, that's how it works. So it would be slash delete workspaces and then followed by, let's say, uh, yeah, delete and them. Is that just a text, a text list, Gary? Just one line per workspace. That's uh, right. Yeah, yeah, but that yeah. text file would have the workspace names, the developer mm -hmm. workspace names uh, in one line each. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, nice one. <laughs> Thank. Thanks for that. Okay. So, yeah, the, um, the test automation, uh, that's the official new feature as per release notes. Uh, uh, has a new field for test steps, which is condition. And as you would expect, you can enter a condition expression using the test automation syntax with the variables uh, prefix by an at. And you can then evaluate the, st the state of variables, the values of variables. And if it's empty, which is the default, uh, then of course it evaluates the true and the step step will be executed during testing when the test runs. And if it evaluates to false, then uh, the test will be skipped. And that's also nicely actually reported in the in the report that you get after that. So that's a, a great addition, I think, for the teams that use test automation uh, to make test scripts more versatile, more generic, any feedback on that one? Any comments? Oh, for the feature. record, um, <laughs> yeah, the, um, the PM for this, uh, Sunil, who's on my team, is uh, unfortunately out today. I'd hoped he could come and answer any questions on this. But if people have follow-up questions, you can direct them through me. This is Brian. And I'll make sure he gets them and, and gets back to you with an answer. So oh. Just in case you need anything. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks much, Brian, for that. Yeah, so uh, you heard the man. <laughs> and uh, if you are new to Siebel Test Automation, so here's the uh, promised uh, Siebel Hub update. We have a long-standing course module video training, uh, which is uh, over two hours long, where you can learn any aspect of setting up test automation, recording, playback, unit tests, batch tests. Um, working with keywords, data sets, REST API, you name it. So um, yeah, 
if you're interested in getting a head start with test automation, check out the uh, course or contact us, Richard and myself, for more details on how you can learn Siebel test automation and new Siebel features in general. Mm. And I'm guessing that at some point, Alex, we will uh, do a quick update to this class so that we can include all these juicy latest uh, things to do with conditions, but I'm uh, also because it's being quite forward quite fast. We're generally very up to date on this class, so people don't need to yes. worry about and we have having the, it. Yeah. We have the conditional update guarantee, so even if it's not in the video, which we obviously can't record every month, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but we have an up continuous updates page where you find uh, the exact link to the new feature that you might be interested in. So you never... You never lose a beat. In, uh, you never miss a beat with uh, this with the Siebel Hub. Okay, uh, and uh, another surprise, maybe uh, if uh, if you will, is that the rich text editor uh, changes the library or yeah the library used to render that rich text editing. It was CK editor until twenty four dot six, and now it is a tiny MCE. So the look and feel, the buttons become different. Functionality is probably the same, roughly. And there might be a reason for this, which we don't know. But definitely, uh... I can I can give you two. Okay, <laughs> Gary may <laughs> even know of more. Um, one had to do with just the licensing model for CK Editor changed. Uh, okay. Um, so that was that was an impact, and and we were looking into just you know addressing that. But also, Alex, you'll remember now, Angelos, Richard, maybe whoever else might have been there. This came up at um, one of the Apps Unlimited events last year. A number of customers were complaining that CK Editor just did not do all the things they needed it to do. So um, we also for that. Because of that, you know, and between the two of them, that was enough for enough for us to investigate a um, an alternative, uh, which is what we ended up with. And um, you know, it, because it's it's all stored as HTML, it, it's not going to affect your existing data or anything like that. It's just mm -hmm. a different UI on top of it. So, yeah. Anyway, that's the background on that. I don't know, well, Carrie, if you know any more just from being on that team now, but <laughs> no, that, that sounds like the, the two I've heard. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, thank, thanks very much for, for clearing that out. So there is sure a reason for, for doing that. And thanks. Thanks very much for clarifying and yeah, great future ahead with tiny MC, which is a longstanding uh, evergreen <laughs> editor of this kind, same as CK. And uh, yeah, speaking of another feature that was introduced, uh, well, a while ago in 22.10, uh, Oracle introduced uh, out-of-the-box integration with OCI AI services, uh, especially the PII detection and speech transcription, which works on service request attachments. And there are two new user properties now introduced. Um, when you when you actually run the uh, repository upgrade, that is, and you get those new user properties, and of course it they're documented now, so you can, if I remember correctly, you can identify the name and extension field for the attachment. So it's so, uh, probably easier to migrate these. Um, out of the box features to another attachment business component like opportunity or any other one uh, by because they have different field names and uh, also along with that is a documentation update with sample rest payloads and responses for the oci ai web service for language uh, specific features such as sentiment analysis or translation so these these examples of course help people adopt uh, uh, adopted really quickly. And um, as is tradition, <laughs> the Siebel Hub has a training there on a two hour class, video class on all aspects of OCI AI integration, getting down to the generative AI integration, which is not yet out of the box, but uh, you can customize, you can create custom integrations quite easily with OCI. So if you're interested in that one, please uh, yeah, check out the 
the training offerings for our new features classes. Anything else about um, about the um, OCI integration comments there? Okay. Sounds sounds like a no. And <coughs> then we uh, we just have. Sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, a, Brian, Brian, no, a question about the previous thing on the AI. I was mm -hmm. just curious by, I don't know, at least rays of, of, of virtual hands or something, just how many people have started using the, the, the AI integration services with mm -hmm. Siebel. Oh, yeah, okay, Here's maybe Siebel. a quick quick raise of hands uh, in the chat <laughs> or something like that. Mm -hmm. Hi, uh, this is Chris. We integrated it for a demo system and we are playing around with this. So far, is it going well or <laughs> just the, the first points? Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. The problem is how to, to add more functionality. Uh -huh. So, yeah. Okay. Well, uh, there is a roadmap item. That is, if I had to guess, sooner rather than later, um, to improve or to add more um, AI features, generative AI features, uh, you know, to be, I won't say built into Siebel because we're not doing the AI, but the, um, you know, the integration points um, are being added to Siebel uh, in, you know, and, and that's going to continue, you know, as needed indefinitely. But I, I would expect another wave of, of uh, AI related items fairly soon, you know, okay, in the good. foreseeable future. Good, good to hear. We, we did have yeah. an interesting effect in this uh, um, speech attachment uh, story. <laughs> uh, when you... <laughs> Yeah, right. The the problem is that uh, from Sybil, the yeah sorry, the problem is that from Sybil, uh, we we can uh, use only uh, English uh, uh, speech. The, it is very interesting mm -hmm. to see what happens when when one send the German uh, uh, text or German language. Uh, <laughs> or see, I try to translate it to English, but very uh, funny okay. English. So, so it's uh, and, yeah. we, we, and we we don't have the opportunity to to give uh, which language we are sending. What you can something you can do in OCI directly. So that will be a great feature to, mm. to add to the OCI here. Yeah. Mm. Okay, okay, that's strange. Because I, I thought German was one of the languages that that, that AI supported for automatic speech recognition. Yeah, a, 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 uh, AI does support it, yes, but uh, Siebel, Siebel just sends it without the language, yeah. uh, without the language oh, and it parameter. Doesn't, that's interesting. And it doesn't huh. really... Uh, interesting. So, I would have thought it would auto-detect it. <laughs> that's, no, that's actually, okay i'm, not, I'm to, just surprised at that you have to do a separate oh. step for that you yeah. have to send it to the <laughs> language detection first and then you get mm -hmm. the language and then you send it uh, but, okay uh i didn't know that i'm surprised that seems yeah. like a pretty basic just, i mean so, you know google translate's done that for the last 15 years auto detects your language yeah so okay so, that's okay fine. Okay, I just didn't know that. Okay, but uh, it's still, yeah. I mean, it's a good note. So I'll take just, back to, to that team and say, hey, just FYI. So, you, sorry, just to make sure I understand. You just passed it in. It happened to be in German, the attachment. And I'm sorry, it did it try to automatically translate it to English or did it just not work? Or what exactly happened? I, I sent the German, uh, uh, German language uh, attachment. And right. uh, I got the trans the the script the the text file, and it was not even not even the words which I was using. It's like it was trying to to translate, but in a very very strange way. So it was a, a text which okay. didn't uh, say anything. So it was not good. Okay. If, so if there's nothing, if if you have an example that doesn't have any you know GDPR covered data or anything like that in it. Would you mind sharing it and I'll just give it to that team and say, hey, what happens when you run on this? You know, and see if they have a, a just so they understand, and it'll be a very concrete example of a problem. Yeah. So if you, you know, if you have such an example that you could send to me as an attach an attachment, just send an email and then I'll, I'll ask them to test it and see what happens. Well, I, I will do that definitely. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I can write yeah. an email and do it tomorrow, mm -hmm. uh, Monday, not tomorrow. No, 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 no sure hurry. That, no, uh, no, no okay. hurry. Uh, they're not going to fix it next week anyway, probably. But I just want to get <laughs> it on their um, on their that. radar. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I just I want to get it on the radar so they understand the, uh, you know, what's going on. Mm -hmm. Sure. Great stuff. 
Yeah. Thanks, Brian, for all all your help here. Uh, sure. Yeah, and there sure is a lot to say about integrating with OCI or AI services, OCI. So most of the time when, when we develop the course uh, of the custom integration examples, we use the OCI REST API directly, uh, which is, you know, has all the parameters you, you can pass on. And that might be, well, that might be just for another Sable Friday probably. So, <laughs> so I'll, I'll go ahead now and uh, just announce again, like I did last time, uh, Oracle Cloud World is coming. So if you're in the area or planning to travel, uh, then it's uh, soon-ish, uh, September. So well before the September Siebel Friday. And uh, after the September Siebel Friday, basically we have the Oracle Applications Unlimited Tour 2024 in uh, six cities in Europe. So you have the dates here. Uh, the link with uh, the for the registration will be in the description of the video. So if you want to join the Siebel Hub team and, and meet fellow Siebel friends, uh, that's always a great, uh, great event to have. Okay, so that's it from, from me for the 24.7 update. And now uh, over to uh, Christian for uh, his uh, presentation. So, thank you, Alex. Just showing myself. I think most people know me here, so we can skip the um, introduction, I think. Um, I have found a tool reading all new features from uh, a SQL Server, uh, not SQL Server, uh, Oracle database. And we found it, I found a tool which, which might be very interesting. So, and now I think I have the wrong, which screen do you see? Oh, it's fine. We see the presentation. You see the presentation? Okay. Mm -hmm. So just like this. Okay. So we found the SQL firewall feature in Oracle data safe. And what I want to find out is, is it worth to follow this topic? And um, there might be some activities on Oracle side. So the, the entry point is the Oracle data safe. You have the shared security model with a lot of uh, security vectors and, and, and protection vectors and with the Oracle data safe, there is a lot of uh, things going on here, especially if you are in the cloud, but not only if you are in the cloud. And the use case might be if you put Siebel into the cloud, it would be fine to have a kind of last line of defense on data level. So these are the features from the data safe overview. We're not experts on the, on the Oracle data safe, but the SQL firewall triggered me. SQL Firewall protects against risks such as SQL injections, attacks, or compromised accounts. And now I'm digging into the SQL Firewall. So what is it? It's a, it's a part of Oracle Database 23 AI or above. It checks all incoming database connection and SQL statements and ensures that only authorized my may be executed in the database. So you can choose, there's a model. You can allow, you can allow and lock, and you can lock and block. So there are some policies. So I think there is a kind of training phase where you start using it and then you say, okay, these users, these policies. I think this part is clear. So it helps to address the following three use cases. Provide real-time protection by restricting database access to authorized SQL statements, mitigate SQL injection. I think Siebel is not very, uh, it's, it, it, it's, it's safe, but yeah. Enforce trusted database connection paths. So if I, if I go through, uh, yeah, at the end, you will have a bunch of policies for a bunch of SQLs. 
So if I transfer this to Siebel, because this is an interesting part in the Siebel Friday, what do I see? It's not yet supported. Oracle Client 19 is not supported with Oracle 23. I think this is a matter of time. Siebel uses structured as a well-known thousands of SQL statements. It's thousands, but it's a bunch of. And if you have an interface like a REST service, it's the same SQL again and again. So if you query a service request by ID and you have an integration object, then the, pff, the SQL is very stable. And if, if I think further, some user groups only use specific views and therefore SQL statements. If you have a service agent, they will not use opportunities or something like that. Or if you, if someone is always working on the my visibility and it uses or he uses all across, it might be a different. So I think the same process fires the same statements. That's the assumption. It's thousands of statements, but with modern analytic tools, you can understand that. So what I see are the potential use cases, different usage of interfaces. You have REST services, web server, whatever. Is it a new process? Is the technical user compromised? Maybe you, you have opened the AI, AI, AI adapter for uh, queries and there is always a query by ID and now is a query by something else. Is it compromised or is it uh, a, a well done change? You might be see different usage for user group. A sales user starts to use all across. He might have the rights, but maybe this will sign something. Maybe you can detect some misconfiguration of visibility and access. Maybe you can do something with the reporting user. Uh, you can also add different client locations so you can uh, narrow down IP addresses. And maybe you can find something, your database login is compromised. So you have a last line of defense on the data layer. And the SQL firewall is integrated in the database 23. So now the questions from my side as a um, SQL consultancy, we stopped at this topic. I find it very interesting, uh, but I do not know any uh, activities or is it worth to follow this topic? Is there a real world scenario? Somebody says, okay, that's what I'm waiting for. Are there some interests in do some next steps? These are the questions. Uh, okay, so. Uh... I, I have a comment, if I may, just because of something you said in the middle, I didn't want to thank you. Uh, for fairly obvious, probably reason, <laughs> we are working on supporting 23 AI directly. Um, it actually comes down to the fact that the, our, um, the data direct ODBC client that we've used for, for 25 years, or well, whenever we introduced Oracle support at Siebel, uh, so 20 plus years, uh, do simply doesn't support it. And so we are working on replacing that with an Oracle native, um, you know, Oracle product. Okay. Um, but it, along the way, you know, there, there's, we're running into a, just a couple of idiosyncrasies where, you know, we, we did something to work around or to, uh, or, or to leverage something in the data direct driver. And so it, um, you know, isn't quite working right in certain areas. And so we just got to kind of be very thoroughly go through everything and test every scenario and then make sure it works. And we've hit a couple of weird things, but, um, and some of you who maybe over the years tried to use the Oracle driver instead of the data direct driver have probably hit weird problems sometimes too. Um, Cause we know some customers have tried that. Um, anyway, point is we are working on that. So I just wanted to throw, interject that part because it did come up in uh, Christian's um, you know, in the middle of his presentation. <laughs> anyway, back to the, answering his question. 
about the interest. <laughs> hmm. yeah. well, thanks, Christian. This looks a little bit like IBM's Guardian product, uh, which monitors SQL usage. We, we actually used it for quite a while, uh, again, as a last line of defense, and it's something to, to note if there are users who are performing queries that might be suspicious that uh, appropriate uh, business units could go uh, track them down and find out a little bit more about what they were looking at. But, you know, it's it's something that I think could have a, a really good applicability for, for systems that have sensitive data. Uh, you, a lot of the focus on security is around, you know, keeping the bad guys out, but sometimes those bad guys are already inside um, and, and we need to look out for exfiltration. And so I, I can see SQL Firewall uh, helping to detect or potentially block those kinds of queries. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks for that, Jason and, and Brian before. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, yeah, the question was, is there some interest in this topic? I, I think there is, <laughs> I can feel it. And it all comes down, of course, when, uh, when, so it's not a question of if, but when uh, uh, Oracle 23 AI will be f uh, fully certified with Siebel, as, sure. as Brian pointed out. And then, um, yeah, not, not wanting to drive away from that topic, but 23 AI has a lot of interesting uh, features, of course, that will uh, Siebel customers will benefit from, uh, like the vector, the, the vector data type, just to the embedded LLM, just to name one that is AI related. Uh, yeah, so I, I don't, I don't want to cut off Christian's time and get us on another subject. But Alex, what you just said is something that I was, uh, that I am very curious about, which is not just that 23 AI has features um, that, that we can leverage, but from, you know, from a customer or, or partner's experiences with customers point of view, you know, what, how do you envision actually using those features? You know, you mentioned vectors, for example, you know, what, um, like in, in people don't necessarily need to answer this now, but I'd be interested in hearing feedback on um, what some of the, A 23 AI features really jump out at you and how they fit into your Siebel implementation, you know, more specifically, like saying vectors are great. Yes, they are. But <laughs> what's the use case? You know, how do you, uh -huh. how do you plan to use them? Where do you think they benefit you? Um, and so I would really, really love input on that because I was very, uh, I, I'm now um, managing our data modeling group, which takes care of such things. And so we're trying to build out from our customers, partners, and then even our own um, Siebel applications teams, and, um, you know, based on their input from customers. And you know, what are the use cases? How can we really leverage these things? What are the things we need to build into our kind of core database um, framework to leverage, uh, you know, that would help to meet those specific use cases, all that kind of stuff. I'm very, very interested in hearing it. Um, Fang has, Anything off the top of the head, uh, and and Alex, we have time. Uh, please let me know. If not, send me something offline, and and let me know, or or I'll set up a call with you to discuss it, um, and 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 so on. So, um, thanks, Jason. I see there's something in chat. Um, anyway, just just you know that would be great because it, it it's now's when we're really you know for now we're getting to support 23 AI, but we're going to support it initially apples for apples, right? It's just going to be another database. We want to know how we can take advantage of the things that are yeah. available, which is yeah. a step further. Like just supporting it is, you know, whatever. It's, it's no better than than nineteen or, you know, twelve for that matter. Uh, you know, it's just the same. It's just supporting the exact same things we've supported for twenty plus years. Um, but we want to find out what are the things our customers would like to leverage in it from a from and you know and business scenarios like we believe that this scenario could be satisfied by the technology provided in 23 ai things like that thanks yeah so uh th thanks brian for, for that i see uh, jason has added to the chat uh vector db embedding policy documents grounded rack based outputs 
for internal, external facing use cases. And I have also added uh, the similarity search that is let's say, based on the vectors, which is really a great use case for allowing to find similar products or find similar records, find, yeah, find similar service requests, as Yuris just points out in the chat. Uh, so that, that similarity search for me is, is still the killer feature of, <laughs> of the uh, LLM uh, integration, yeah, and the, the vectors. So, and of course, a, a well-trained, uh, well-behaved <laughs> LLM on top uh, is uh, yeah. then, uh, and which is of course another story. <laughs> uh, you have to choose your LLM, you have to train it, but then uh, creating the vectors and then using them for that kind of search is just a, another dimension, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. But, okay, but that took away, uh, yeah, took away from Christian's. <laughs> oh, no. Sorry, Christian. No problem. <laughs> I, I, I was through, so I think. For me, it might be a use case if you put Siebel into the cloud and you might add some security level and security concept mm -hmm. and things like that. So it might be in the combination with putting it in mm -hmm. the cloud using yeah. Data Guard. But, but a, a as, good thing. Yeah. As, as you say, in the, in the cloud is because you're, you mean because you're, the Siebel is rather, let's say, more public than yes. on-prem, but still yes. it would work on-prem as well with the 23 yes. AI. Yes being the same, yeah, yes. same code base. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Okay. Right. So, so yeah, as stop my presentation. So thank yeah. you for following. Yeah. Th thank you very much, Christian, for that uh, inspiration. And also, yeah, you heard, uh, you heard Brian, if there's anything you have if we, on behalf of 23 AI features, uh, put them in the chat or sent Brian uh, directly by email. Okay, uh, so uh, agenda-wise, we have um, something uh, we started or Oracle started in 24.6, and that's the uh, path to Redwood. Uh, the reason for, for why I bring it up again, of course, is that Redwood is not going away anytime soon. It's just a new thing, and customers are updating to uh, 20, uh, sorry, 24.6 and of course 24.7 and future versions. Um, and I have some information about that that we put together. But before that, I see um, there are new comments in the chat re related to 23AI. Uh, Yuris mentions uh, it will support JSON directly. Yeah, there's the JSON, uh, what's it called? Or dual dual relation, relational. <laughs> Uh, relational duality uh, and consider as a REST alternative for simple queries, uh, store data, store data as JSON directly. Wow. Yeah, that would be, that would be nice. <laughs> and also JSON has added to the chat, um, uh, agreed with, I can see a super search that takes human input, uh, for example, recent open opportunities over two million with companies based in North America. Yeah, so the uh, the um, search on steroids. Yeah, that we talked about, which is a long-standing thing. Uh, I mean, <laughs> it just comes to my mind. In Enquire started uh, started all that with answers. Anybody remembers Enquire answers, <laughs> which became Siebel Analytic analytics yeah. answers and th that was the general idea have a text a google style uh, text box where you enter stuff like that and it would be translated into a relational query and comes back and uh, that, that takes me back alex that was a long time ago. yeah 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 it just it just <laughs> flashed before my eye <laughs> <laughs> okay thanks jason for that flashback uh, but now we can put it i think now we can really do it with the llm with the power of an llm uh, that r can really make sense in, you know, in the uh, limited way that it is, but it, it can make sense of the input and produce a uh, really usable output or or produce code even or SQL <laughs> that runs. Uh, so yeah, that's, oh, okay. We're getting excited here. Uh, but let, let me go back to uh, Redwood uh, and let me take you to, 
uh, to the Siebel Hub, uh, Siebel Hub YouTube channel. As you know, of course, uh, it's a, a, rec a channel that we use uh, we use to well place place the Siebel Fridays on for for replays. We uh, have the Siebel update summaries, and uh, Redwood, of course, steered a lot uh, of attention. And so I created something, uh, a multi-part playlist, which I call the Path to Redwood, which is actually a, a stealth little course <laughs> that is available for free uh, of how to how to properly do a repository upgrade in 24.6. And that would apply to higher versions, of course, because the Path to Redwood uh, starts actually with um, well, finally, for, for some customers, <laughs> uh, in terms of finally doing a, a update of, of your Siebel environment, but also running a repository upgrade. And I have several customers for, for them, it's the first time they, they, are, they are super interested in Redwood and they are on, let's say, 22.10 20, <laughs> or, yeah, that, that's one customer. And they consider updating, but then they learn, okay, we have to we have to run the repository upgrade for that, and they have never done it, so uh, they get this huge, you know, amount of uh, changes over the uh, past. Well, it started, uh, yeah, four four plus years that Oracle has put in. So the big the big SIF import, and uh, people have to deal with that and learn basically. Do it the first time. So we have some learning curve there. And this video series, this playlist is trying to address that, doing a, a walkthrough completely from a prior version, running repository upgrade, enabling Redwood, uh, which basically the repository upgrades enables it. Uh, yeah, so I just wanted to put that here. And the link, of course, to this playlist will be in the description. You can find it. Uh, as always on the Siebel Hub YouTube channel. Let me just briefly share the playlist link with you. So uh, it also comes with a full, uh, not, not full, <laughs> but uh, well, could be full or incremental migration to the RR, which is uh, also something when you run a repository upgrade, you have to run a migration as well, which is um, people like, People often attending the Siebel Fridays probably know or watching my videos, but some customers are surprised to learn that there is a file, uh, an input file for the application data service and whatnot. So I, I would like to, again, uh, today we ask questions to, to the group, to the audience. Um, I would like to know um, what's, what's your take on uh, Redwood? What's your experience? Did you did you update already? Did you enable Redwood and evaluate it? Also, hi, it's Roy again. Hi, Roy. Um, yes, we did the uh, the upgrade from twenty four three to twenty four six. In this repository, match was from twenty zero twenty point three. I think it was quite painful. Because um, yeah, that's the full. That's the big one I talked that's about. That's the big one. It's yeah. the very big one. And uh, yes, of course, there there are uh, human mistakes uh, on on the way, uh, which are causing time. But what we re what I really find painful was the um, conflict lay sol solution. <laughs> this screen, I don't know whether it's only on our system or so everywhere else, but this is a very very extreme slow uh, stuff. Uh, every click of of of, uh, of a new uh, object takes between 20, 10 to twenty seconds to open, and when you have a, a big list, it's really painful. So, so, so we spent we spent almost two days only with conflict conflict um, solution, and we were not mm -hmm. we didn't do everything. Properly. So you you're referring to the uh, few that Oracle provides in web tools, the exactly. hier hierarchical few, yeah. You know, which exactly. I, I think I have. Yes, uh, I think you do. I so I I also want to say I've seen your videos. Um, and they they are really helpful. So that that one, that. yeah, uh, that yes, few, exactly. that few where you have to go for each object. You have to find exactly. the attributes and set the flag or not. Here I'm just exactly. setting flags. For, 
example. Exactly. And uh, the video is going quickly, but within hours. It's yeah, yeah, I know this. It takes a lot of time, and I, I've also um, not sure if I presented that in the video, to be honest. But uh, I have on Dev Pops, I have a custom view, which actually accesses those tables in a flat view. So, it is available in the video, Alex. Uh, okay, thanks. <laughs> thanks for confirming. I forgot my uh, where I put in the videos. <laughs> Not too, too many of them. So yeah, so I, I introduced that flat view from DevPops. You can import. Let, let, let's briefly go there. So you know what I'm talking about. So uh, DevPops <laughs> is well known to the audience here of Siebel Fridays. And one of the SIF files in DevPops, it's actually this one, the uh, BCRM imported object property list view. It sits on top of those tables, the same tables carry the data, but it creates a flat style view. So you have a record for every property. And so you can open it, of course, as a view in the Siebel client, or you can use that view or that business, business object <laughs> to export the data or export it to Excel in from the view and then uh, work uh, with what we call the exclusion principle. So, you know, for example, inserts from Oracle, new objects from Oracle, you can safely ignore because there will never be a conflict because they're new. And then you can quick identify the objects that you probably have modified by the industry. Let's say if you're not using life sciences, then all the life sciences objects are probably safe to import. And so you can narrow it down really quickly. But it's it's something, it's a learning curve, as, as you say, Roy, and uh, you really have to uh, try it in a sandbox, in a safe environment and get to grips, especially if you come from, if you have never run it and 20.3 up, upwards is imported. And uh, also uh, another thing, of course, about updating to 24.6 and higher is, uh, when people realize that modifying the standard login CSS was a bad idea. <laughs> so let me go go back to sure is uh, the video here with the, uh, I created a video for that, which is about uh, custom login pages that you might have <laughs> because uh, e even if you, as you as you know by now, as a, even if you don't really uh, run the repository upgrade, but Oracle has updated the, the web template and style sheets for the login pages of uh, of the application, including web tools and also SMC. So you get this uh, fresh uh, look and feel for the vanilla login page. But if you have, let's say, messed around with it in an unsupported manner by modifying the vanilla CSS file or the vanilla web template, you get a garbled uh, login page uh, with which kind of merges your changes and oracles. Of course, it is, it's not a good fit. So uh, the video explains uh, quickly how to uh, get on the custom track and create a custom web template, even a custom login page, which is, a, of course, you can do that. Yeah. Can I come in on that real quick, please? Oh, Alex? yeah, sure, um, sure, sure. I mean, that, just to be clear, I, you know, we, we had to make changes to just accommodate the new, the new, you know, theme and layout and everything for Redwood. Um, this, this is our fault in the sense that we actually say in Bookshelf that it's okay to modify web templates. Um, I personally think it's a bad idea. And people should not modify our web templates, but rather, um, uh, you know, create a, a clone and then, you know, use the clone because of exactly this problem. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's our mistake in that we've always said it's okay to modify web templates. Um, but, yeah. you know, ultimately, I think that's a bad idea for that particular object type, um, especially because it's all or nothing, right? Like, it's just a big string. Uh, yeah. There's no, you know, and so it's very easy to cause yourself a problem. So, you know, while our, while we do allow it, my go forward recommendation would be try to not do that <laughs> instead clone things. Now I understand because they're so, um, I don't know, they're, they're so nested that that sometimes is going to be inconvenient, um, yeah. but just in general, it'd be a better practice in my mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, uh, yeah, thanks, Brian, for that. So the, the easy way out is, of course, uh, take a copy of the uh, Siebel vanilla web template, make it your own, 
And then you can go ahead and insert your custom CSS link, even custom JavaScript. And so you can do a little bit of magic if you want on the, on the homepage. So this video takes you through a simple uh, example. And of course my, my web design skills are <laughs> a little bit limited, but uh, yeah, I was able to create uh, a nice uh, login page, a completely custom login page with, with the Siebel version displayed, uh, stuff like that. So uh, yeah, so that's another another step on the road to Redwood, even if you're not interested in the Redwood theme as a customer, because you have your own custom themes, uh, that login page uh, issue will just come back to you. Yeah. Um, and uh, I see that in uh, Rajesh points out in the chat, there is a, there's also a known issue, uh, a bug, a bug that was haunting us in yeah. the repository upgrade as actually the post install database setup. Uh, yeah, not, not does something with the project ID. <laughs> Uh, for one project, and then the repository upgrade fails on top of that. And that's fixed in 24.7. So Rajas, we had some conversation and uh, did the 24.7 up, update work for you then finally? Yeah. Yes, 24.7 is working. Uh, in the, I just did it in the lower environment and it is good now. So I okay. could see the Redwood team and everything. Because okay. with this bug, I couldn't, I, I was not able to see the Redwood based files because it fails oh. uh, in the repository upgrade and the manifest files has not moved. Yes, yes. Because yeah, it fails at the repository upgrade, then the manifest import exactly. does not run. You get don't get any Redwood. Uh, so 24.7 is really the version to go then. Uh, exactly. Don't don't, don't use 24.6. You risk you risk hitting this bug. And 24.7 yes. yeah. does away with it. So, yeah. Thanks for confirming Rajesh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, of course, the latest Siebel update is always the best update, <laughs> as, as we say. Uh, why, why go for 24.6 if 24.7 is out? Hey, Alex, sorry. Um, in case anyone hasn't noticed, there are much more important reasons you should go with 24.7. Um, particularly, like, I, I don't know if any, I mean, Alex, you must have noticed when you downloaded it, that anything between 24.1 and 24.6, there's a a known issue with high memory consumption oh, yes, yeah. and, and memory uh, use in um, particularly for people running on, on Linux. Um, and so there's actually required, um, you know, uh, POC that you have to install after mm -hmm. you install 24 six or, or whatever. If you're on one of the old ones, it's available for you there as well. So you, you want to be on 24 seven anyway, the, mm -hmm. um, the issue that's, you know, that, that raged in the chat there is, I mean, it's, it's you know, it's bad, but um, but actually not everyone will hit it. it. It will only hit people who come from certain versions, and it has to do with the fact that some of the event-driven architecture repository artifacts were mistakenly slipped into a release before the product, before that feature was released. And it since it wasn't complete, that like all the row IDs don't tie out properly. So anyway, that, mm -hmm. that's kind of how that happened. Um, but in any case, you do not want to be on 24.1 through 24.6, particularly if you're on Linux. Um, that so performance, just, uh, just uh, script yeah. performance issue. Yeah, that right. right. And it's, uh, it's major. <laughs> It'll shut you down. It looks like Nick says, yeah, that yeah, is hard. Yeah, I, I've yeah, seen, it's, it's bad. I've discussed it with Nick and it's, it's really bad. <laughs> so we, we did, yeah. we did a SARM, uh, we did a SARM analysis mm -hmm. and it was, it was very clear that script is now, uh, yeah. At, at snail at the snail space and not doing anything yeah so uh, but that's fixed in 24.7 as well so another reason to yeah uh, go to 24.7 rather sooner than later okay uh thanks uh, thanks very much uh brian and and also everybody else who really ch uh, chimed in a lot in the chat. So I'm, I'm just scanning the chat for anything uh, new here. Okay. And so, yeah, that, that's it from my side. So we have, uh, we have a lot of updates. Uh, new things are coming, exciting times ahead. Before we close down, of course, any, any closing remarks from you guys? 
while the microphones are open. Carrie, Carrie has something uh, in the chat. Uh, send Carrie <laughs> reasons why you do not want to run repository upgrade, if you will. Yeah, if, it, if you hate it, if you avoid it, if it's just troublesome, whatever the, the problems you have or perceived problems, please send them to me. I want to make it so that nobody avoids it. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's that's cool. Thanks, Gary. Thanks for all your support here. So yeah, you heard the man. So please do do talk to Oracle. Yeah, yeah. And Nick Nick answers Kerry right. right here in the chat right. <laughs> uh, for the clinical trial. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that's a specific functional one, which is fine. I, I know about that one, but mm -hmm. also um, any technical ones as well. Mm -hmm. Not not just. I mean, I understand, you know, Nick, I understand your case. I mean, it's it's that you wrote your own stuff before they wrote it. So it'll break all your stuff. Uh, and that's a perfectly good answer to, to Carrie's question. But um, I just want to mm -hmm. encourage also any sort of technical issues people have with, with why they don't want to run it, uh, as mm -hmm. well as functional issues. Yeah. Thanks. And so, yeah, thank, thanks for that. Um, and so, yeah, with that, uh, we... Wrap, we wrap up another Siebel Friday. Uh, thanks, thank, thanks everybody for joining in and being uh, making it a super Siebel Friday again. Looking forward to the next one. Have a great weekend. See you soon. Thank you, Alex.